So I've got a really fun recipe for you all. We're going sourdough again, but with this one, we're actually going to be using, it's that perfect time of year. We're going to do it like a spiced pumpkin. Uh, we're going to spice it up with a little bit of chili, a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of cinnamon, and um, some roast garlic and some grated cheddar. So we got spiced pumpkin, cheddar, and roasted garlic sourdough. Um, right now, perfect time of year, pumpkins are in season, absolutely ideal, but realistically you could do it with kind of any little squash, kind of root veg, chop and change this one can be doing throughout the year and it's all about kind of getting flavors um, into our bread and taking it to the next level so um, we are going sourdough with this one so very very simply for this recipe we are using 400 grams of strong flour I have 150 grams of sourdough 10 grams of salt and 300 grams of water so my little sourdough here, this is what we call, you often hear us talking about um, our sourdoughs and our leavens, and sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. What's the difference? Um, basically, the leaven is the sourdough we're preparing specifically for our recipe. Last night, um, I took 50 grams of starter. I'm using a rice starter. I added in, stirred together 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water. And I wanted to give that about 10 hours, so it's kind of at its peak and it's perfect for, the, for our bread. So the leaven is simply the sourdough I prepared specifically for this recipe. And how I know it's good to go is we have a little thing called the float test. Basically, all you do is take a little bit of your starter and I'm just gonna drop it into my water. And ideally, it should float, which you can see it's doing absolutely perfectly. So that's exactly what we're looking for. As I said, I'm using a rye starter. If you don't have rye and you've got a white starter culture, that's absolutely fine, or a wholemeal, no problem whatsoever. So to get this recipe started, we are adding in all our starter, or our leaven. So as I said, it's 150 grams. And again, I'm using the water. This starter is going straight in as well. So it's 300 mils. So we're not adding any salt just yet. We're leaving this out. We are simply just combining all our ingredients. So what we want to do is we want to auto laser our dough. It's allowing the fermentation process to start, but without the presence of salt. It also means that your flour will hydrate fully. It just gives it a chance to soak up as much liquid as possible. So once you, all, your, everything, all the flour has been incorporated, we're simply gonna pop that to one side and we're gonna leave it rest for about 30 minutes. So while our dough is resting and while the autolase process is, is uh, going through, we can simply look to prepare our pumpkin and our garlic. So you probably want about 400 grams of raw pumpkin, which by the time it's roasted, it'll you'll be left at roughly about 200 grams. So kind of go a little bit more. So just literally peeled, roughly diced, and I'm just going for um, about like a half teaspoon of paprika, a little bit of chili, a little pinch of cayenne pepper, some salt, some pepper, and a little bit of cinnamon. So it kind of gives a kind of warm spice flavors to it. And we're just gonna roast it for about 30 minutes with a little bit of olive oil at about 165 degrees, which should give us then Beautifully and soft pumpkin. We also want to add to our dough some roast garlic. Easiest way to roast your garlic is literally take the full bulb in the skins and just pop it in on the tray on top of your pumpkin and in about 30 minutes it should have a like soft little pinch to it. That's all we're looking for. And all you're going to do then is just pop it out and you'll be left with these lovely soft roasted garlic cloves. So for this recipe I want half a bulb. So it's not a clove, it's a bulb. So I want half of this. So we want lots and lots of flavor. Because you'll kind of find once garlics get roasted, its flavor really, really changes. It gets a beautiful sweetness to it, um, as opposed to that kind of really punchy uh, garlic flavor, which we're used to. And then throughout our dough, we're gonna have some grated cheddar spread throughout it. So our dough has been kind of sitting for the last 30 minutes. But at this stage now, what we want to do is we want to incorporate our salt. We're using 10 grams of sea salt. Just sprinkle that in. And at this point as well, we're going to add in our roasted garlic. I'm just gonna be just using the back of the knife and just kind of squash it down. A bit like a roast garlic puree. Which is just gonna make it that a little bit easier just to work it into my dough. And as I say, it's a half a bulb of garlic. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna knead. So you could use a little dough scraper, you could turn it out on the table if you want. Or if easier, you can just keep everything within the bowl and just use your hand. So if you use your hand, Basically, you're shaping a bit like a dough hook. And then, let's just start working everything in together. About four or five minutes is all we need. I just use a little bit of oil on my hands. 
And I'm just using a little bit of vegetable oil or sunflower oil. And then by using a little bit of oil, it makes it all much easier to handle, much easier to manipulate. You can see how beautiful and smooth it's become. One little way in which we test our dough is using the window pane effect. So again, a little bit of oil in your hands, small bit of dough, and kind of aim towards the center, nice and slowly, stretching the dough out. It's a little bit trickier with wetter, higher hydrated doughs, but you can kind of see it, that kind of light and shadow behind it, and it's able to hold its weight. It's not ripping, and it's not tearing. So that's exactly what we want. Now, sometimes it's the difference between you ripping it and the dough itself ripping, because some people just kind of get their fingers in, start over stretching it, and you can see it's lovely and elastic, but then as I keep going, I'm gonna rip it and tear it. And that's me ripping it rather than the dough ripping. So don't worry if you're kind of struggling with it and you feel like, oh God, I can't get the window pain effect, because it does take a little bit of practice to get used to kind of working and handling wetter doughs like that. So even if you can get it to the stage, it's that beautiful, silky, smoothy shine. That's exactly what we want. So at this point then, it's into our oil bowl. So we do that for 30 minutes and then we're gonna come right back to it. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna incorporate a stretch and a fold. So you can just take a little bit of flour on your work surface, just enough to make the dough manageable. So all you wanna do is just kind of stretch it out. So we're gonna add it in about three stages. So you think about it roughly about a third, spread it over the surface of the dough. So don't judge me with this recipe because I am putting in a full block of cheese, uh, but I promise you it's completely worth it. So we're using like a nice Dublin or cheddar here. So a nice generous grating. So then very simply, all you're doing, folding your dough into the center, from the base, fold in again, and then the left over right. A little drop of oil in our bowl. Back into our bowl and it's going to rest again for another 30 minutes. And we're going to repeat that process two more times. A little bit of flour on your counter, turn the dough out, just stretch it out. So you probably feel a bit more pull within the dough this time around because you can feel the strength building within our dough. A spiced roast pumpkin. Again, lots and lots of cheese. Again, once again, fold over. And you can already see the lovely spice, the pumpkin, the layers, absolutely beautiful, back into our bowl. And then we're gonna repeat that process one more time, and then that would be it, our dough done. So simply just gonna repeat the process, exactly the same as earlier. It's the last of our pumpkin spread throughout. And then just by doing it in kind of three different stages means you get a good even distribution of our pumpkin and cheese. And we're just gonna keep back a little bit of cheese, which we're gonna use halfway through our baking, which I'll show you later. Same as before. A little stretch, a little fold. And that's my little sous chef. It's James underneath the table. <laughs> stretch and fold. And that is it. So rest for 20 minutes, then we're gonna shape, and then we're gonna pop it in the fridge overnight. So our dough's been allowed to rest. All we're simply gonna do now is just gently shape it. It's gonna go straight into our Pyrex dish, which we're using for proving. So I just want to kind of a rough little kind of round. So I'm taking each edge, a little short stretch. And just let the next one on top of each other. You'll see it naturally start to curve around. You're going to find where you're going to have little pockets of cheese, pumpkin, all pushing throughout the dough. Then simply using my hands, I'm simply just going to pull the dough straight towards me. So you just turn it 45 degrees, seam to the bottom, and we go again. Three or four times just to get a shape you're happy with. And then just a little rub of flour over the surface of the dough. It'll just help it to ensure that the dough doesn't stick when it comes to taking our tea towel off uh, come tomorrow morning. Bring the dough together and it's straight into your basket, upside down. Dust the flour on top. I'm just gonna prove this in the fridge overnight. Happily sit there for 12, 14 hours, no issue whatsoever. And you can see now it's actually well proven. So I want to be nice and gentle with it. I don't want to kind of knock too much air from it. If you're worried about your dough sticking, just take a little bit of parchment paper and just put it on the base. So a little bit of parchment paper, make your life much easier. Simply pop your lid on, just flip it upside down. Just nice and gently, slowly peel the our tea towel off. So don't just like pull it straight off because what you often can do if it is it's caught anywhere at all you're just going to cause your dough to be knocked back last thing to do to our dough before it goes in the oven is i need to score it so it's just very simple i'm just going for a little cross on the top 
then it's simply the dome straight on top and that's simply going to go into our oven um, at 240 degrees i'm going to give it about 25 minutes with the dome on and then after that for probably the last 10 15 minutes of my bake i'll take the lid off So our loaf has been, it's been in the oven for about the last 25 minutes or more. So it's going to need probably another 10 to 15 minutes at least in the oven. We're going to take the dome off. So I'm, we take basically Mandy, who's uh, the, the person behind the camera. Uh, she was telling me about these like South African cheese rolls. Um, she says, can't really find them anywhere. Just a lovely soft white roll, really covered in cheese and it's baked in the oven. So we're going to take a little bit of inspiration from that to finish our bread. So we're taking a little bit more cheddar and we're going all over it. You'll probably find with your dough that you might not get the same height or rise as you would say in your typical kind of just simple white dough because the bread's got much more weight to carry. You know, 10 more minutes in the oven and then we'll check it again. Quite hot now, but just that little bit of parchment paper just helps to get the dough out. Now it's roasting hot at the minute, I'm going to let it cool for a couple minutes and then I'm going to throw the pull straight into it and you're going to see the pockets of our pumpkin, our cheese melted throughout it. So the real beauty of this loaf comes once we actually get the cut into it. I promise you, you've got to make this loaf because the smell that's coming from this is absolutely stunning. So I'm going to pull it apart. Now I've kind of destroyed the loaf here, but don't worry, we're, we're, we're going to tuck straight into it. Like you could do this little smaller versions, little tear and shares, but yeah, and the cheese on top. Really amazing. It's just comfort food. So yeah, that's our spiced pumpkin, roast garlic and cheddar sourdough. Give it a go.